welcome back to another episode of our Lorbeck Luxury Cars Friday Drives. This week, we're gonna be driving the BMW 1M. Now, this car is very specific because it's actually one of 100 in Australia, which makes it really, really special. But also, which you'll see from the exterior of the car, it has a BMW M Motorsport livery as well, which almost takes me back to the old touring car days. My dad raced the BMW in British touring cars, and that white with the blue and the red uh, livery, which is so iconic with BMW around the world, no different to their badge. Brabham and BMW have a huge amount of history dating back to the 1983 Formula One World Championship season where Nelson Piquet driving the Brabham BT52 with a BMW engine won the Formula One World Championship. My father David also raced a BMW in the British Touring Car Championship and also won the Bathurst 1000 with his brother Jeff in a BMW 3 Series. Let's talk a little bit about the engine. It's a three litre six cylinder engine roughly about 355 brake horsepower. Now, in normal mode, if you will, you don't necessarily feel that straight away, but with the, the use of our M button here, you feel it instantly. And the change that that button on the steering wheel makes means that this car becomes an awful lot of fun very, very quickly. talk a bit about the exterior of the car. Now, not just because of the shape of it, it's very classic one series shape, iconic shape if you ask me. You've got the slightly smaller than normal nowadays front grille, which I'm a big fan of. The, the big ones nowadays, I'm, it's, not, it's not my favorite, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. One thing I really like is not just the M Sport livery, which we're gonna go into in a minute, but you can see the venting all through here makes it look just a bit meaner. The guards are a little bit wider, particularly on the rear as we head this way. You've got the M badge on the side here and that turbo liveried all the way down, following the car all the way around and wrapping towards the back as well. And you see the guards on the side there, they're not standard, you know, you get a 135i, they're not gonna look like that. This is, looks so much more chunkier and meaner, which I really, really like. I've also just noticed here the, the carbon wing mirrors as well on the top there. And as we make our way to the back of the car, you can start to really get a picture of livery coming all the way around. You've got the carbon little rear winglet here, which I'm a big fan of. You've got the two exhausts on either side. You know, there's something about seeing two exhausts either side. You know it's sportier. Another thing that I noticed is you can see the M signifier on the kick panel there with sort of the, the metallic striping as well. Let's talk a little bit about the interior of the car as well. Now, we've noticed a couple of things on the drive here, particularly that signification of the M badge on the gear lever here, the one of 100 just there, but also this sort of double orange stitching all through the interior. And it's those niceties that they go a long way. The fact that it's soft touch with the Alcantara is really nice too. So the BMW 1M. Now we've got different iterations of M series cars, synonymous particularly with M3s and M4s. And now in more recent times, the M3, M4, M2 competition as well. But this generation of car, the 135i was kind of the staple for the higher end performance hot hatch, but it wasn't really a hot hatch. Whereas this became that for BMW at the time, taking a lot of the DNA out of the M3 into a smaller package. It's still a coupe and not a hatch in some way, but to me it's still a hot hatch. You know, the, the DNA of the car is, is such that it feels like a hot hatch. I don't feel like I'm in a big car. But as I'm driving, I can feel why they went in the direction they went with. And we spoke a little bit earlier about the use of the M button. Without it, it just feels like any other BMW. But as soon as you press that button, I put my foot down, it's an instant pickup of the throttle. Everything becomes super, super direct and sharp. 
And as I'm well, we're coming up to around about now, speed up just a little bit, up to 40, and you can feel the car as I'm turning, turning, turning. It really complies with what I'm trying to do. I pick up the throttle on the exit and it really feels like I'm getting that M feeling out of it. I've driven a lot of M cars, mostly current ones, and this is giving me that feeling, but only when I've got the M button on. If I don't, and I just want a really cruisy drive, well, that's what I get out of it. As we're driving along, there's a couple of things as I'm driving that I've really, really enjoyed. One is obviously the fact that this is a manual, because I love a manual, and it just, it feels like I'm having to actually drive the thing. You can see the, the M badge on there, the iconic M signification on there. The other thing, as I'm coming into the speed bumps and changing gears, is the placement of the brake and the throttle is really close together. And sometimes I get into cars, and that are particularly with manuals, that are so far away, and for me, I want to heel, be able to heel and toe in the car. Whereas I can just roll my foot foot nicely over from the brake to the throttle as I'm braking and changing gear and it actually is, makes it so much fun. I can imagine driving it on a circuit and just being able to punch down the gears really smoothly whilst actually being able to heel and toe correctly rather than having to manage the whole time which, which often happens in cars that, that I've driven. If that placement of that brake and then the throttle is really far away you can have to really feed your foot across and it's not a comfortable feeling it means that the braking isn't quite optimized whereas in this thing the brakes really close together and that's really really something that I've really enjoyed this car's been maintained really really well it's been fully serviced for its whole life it's really barely been driven in the grand scheme of things never been tracked and you can feel that as I change gear, it's just smooth but punchy as well, where it's not loose in the gearbox, it's still nice and, and constricted where you can feel each gear change. And almost you can almost hear it as you change gear, how, how it punches in, which is really, really nice. And it makes the whole driving experience really enjoyable because you don't get a car like this just because it's smooth and comfortable. You get it for those feelings. You get it for the close brake and the close throttle. You get it for that punchy gearbox as you're changing gears. That's what it's there to do. week's Friday drive. I've had a real amount of fun with this little car and I'd driven one years ago and I absolutely loved it and it still gives me that same sensation today as it did then as an 18 year old. It's been so much fun, I've loved it. Make sure you follow us on all our social medias. Keep an eye out for our Lorbeck Luxury Cars Friday drives on YouTube and we'll see you next time. Cheers.